So I had a different video idea that I was going to do this week, but then something happened yesterday. I'm not really going to talk about it today, but suffice it to say, it made me question whether I'm ready for my future. I stayed up till two in the morning crying about it, and I went down and I talked to my mom, and we had a discussion basically about what's going to happen in my near future and what isn't going to happen that I seem to think will. And it was a really comforting discussion. I feel a lot more prepared now. Like, I know what's coming for me next semester in college. Most seniors in their second semester, I hear, have similar worries. And so I thought that it would be helpful for me to share what she told me to everyone else out there who might be needing some comfort. So here are some things she told me. First of all, it's not permanent. You aren't leaving home forever. You're not moving to Mars. You will be near home no matter where you are. You will be able to get home. And you will go home. You'll always be able to call your parents. And you don't have to consider it as a last resort. They are still there for you. Every support network you had here at home in high school is still there to support you. They just might be doing it from afar. You might not live with them or near them anymore, but they're still there for you. It's not like your parents just suddenly drop off the edge of the planet as soon as you go to college. And believe it or not, a lot of people go back and live with their parents after they finish college. So it's not like you're never going to be living here again. Yeah, it may feel right now like you're about to say goodbye to your childhood home, but it's not permanent. As Dumbledore said to Hagrid, it's not really a goodbye after all. You're not going away forever. Number two, the college people. They don't hate you. They don't expect you to be some miraculously fully formed adult who can do everything that you need to do, and they aren't there to punish you whenever things go wrong, they're there to help you when things go wrong. There's a support system built into every university because you know what? They have thousands of people there having the same problems. And the people at the university, the adults, they know that. The people who work at the university want you to succeed. They're there to help you. They don't want you to do badly. They're not there to scowl at you and give you bad grades. Keep that in mind. Number three. 18 isn't a magical age where all of a sudden you have to be entirely self-sufficient and you can't ask for help anymore. At 18, no matter what kinds of skills you may have already learned, no one expects you to be a fully functioning adult. Sure, you can vote and in some countries you can drink, but that doesn't mean that you're a fully functioning adult. No one expects you to be a fully functioning adult. You don't have to be ready to go through life without guidance as soon as you hit 18. Because the thing is, college is a transition time. It's not being plunged into adulthood. Being a college student is not the same thing as being an adult. College is the time between high school and having to go out in the world on your own. So just remember, when you're at college, you may feel like an adult. You may act like an adult. But you don't have to 100% be an adult if you're not ready. Number four. The idea of living on your own and having all of these things running your own household in a way that you've never had to do before, believe it or not, that's what you've been preparing for all throughout high school and pretty much your entire childhood. For the past few years, you've been building the skills that you need to go live on your own in college, and then you know what college is going to do? It's going to build you the skills that you need to go live in the real world. So don't worry. You can do it. Number five, it's not just you. I promise. No matter what you think it is, it's not just you. Everyone has insecurities. Look around you. The people that you see going about their daily lives, they have some sort of insecurity too, and you have no idea about it. Why? Because it doesn't affect how they live and how they present. Because if they can worry about these kinds of things and still manage to be the successful person that they are, so can you. I promise. Just because you feel alone doesn't mean you are. You're not the only one struggling. And people, if you reach out, are there to help you through this struggle. Because even if everyone feels alone and even if everyone is struggling separately, if you do it together, it's not as bad. Sixth and finally, mistakes are a thing that sometimes happen. Maybe one day you forgot to take the cookies out of the oven or you woke up at two in the morning remembering you had a paper you hadn't started that was due the next day. Thing is, it's gonna happen. You're not perfect. You're not flawless. No one is. That's an impossibility. And anyone who isn't possible will have a mistake sometimes and it may seem horrific or terrible or huge, but it's not. I promise you, mistakes rarely signify the end of the world.
So even if it feels like the biggest deal ever, absolutely that is an okay way to feel. But just remember, at the end of the day, one missed paper isn't gonna ruin your life. Most mistakes will eventually become fun stories you can tell your children when they come crying to you at 2 a.m. in the middle of their senior year of high school, worried about the big wide world and leaving you behind. And that's about it. If you have any stories or other pieces of advice that you want to share with people in my position, or if you are in my position and you have some thoughts on the subject, feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to have a discussion about this. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Bye!